Greetings YouTubers and welcome to the Gearbench. Today we are here to talk about the calorie density of freeze-dried food. Now this is part two in a series. In part one I talk about every other kind of food from meat and fruit to cereals, nutrition bars, trail mix, jerky, you name it. There's over 900 items discussed in 20 categories. Plus there's a discussion about why density matters and some number crunching on sample meal plans to show just how many pounds, not ounces, can be saved. And there's a free downloadable chart that contains all the items discussed in that video. This is to cover the one category of food that wasn't in the first one. Okay, so the way the chart is set up, it's sorted alphabetically first by brand, then by flavor. And that's to make it easier for you to look up meals by name. The next column is for package type. Most manufacturers just have the standard pouch, but Mountain House has options like this Pro Pack, which is a shrink wrap version of the pouch to make it a little more compact. Under normal circumstances, these two would be readily available at places like Amazon and REI. And then directly from their website, you can get their military surplus option. It's all the same flavors, but for my money, this is the most uh, compact and easy to pack. They do all have different serving sizes though, so keep track of the calories per container. Next we have the meal type, whether that's breakfast, an entree, or dessert. And then in some instances you have things like side dishes and bumps, which are not dishes in their own right. What they are is ingredients that can be added to something else to bump up the calories. The prep column speaks to how you prepare these things in the field. The industry standard is the hot prep, which is the boil-in bag. You just add boiling water and let it sit. But an increasing trend is the cook style, which you don't just add the water, you actually leave it on the heat and simmer it for several minutes. Now this takes longer, uses more fuel, and it means you have dishes to clean, but some people feel it's worth it because of differences in taste and texture. And then lastly you have the cold prep, which doesn't require you to boil anything, you just add water and stir. Obviously you can cold soak both of these as well, it just takes a lot longer and there may be a difference in how to go about it between the hots and the cooks. So keep your eyes open for the number of servings when you're buying. There's 620 calories in this bag and 1240 in this one. The Mountain House has an odd sort of habit of using two and a half servings for their entrees. So if you're reading the label on the back and it says 230 calories, that's per serving. At two and a half servings, there's 575 calories in the pouch. And then of course we have columns for weight per serving. And with that we can compute density, which is just calories per ounce. And the numbers in the density column are color coded according to our weight characterizations. Again, for an explanation for how those categories were derived, see the first video in the series linked below. Of the manufacturers considered, Alpine Air has the third largest menu in terms of the number of entree flavors offered. And if we look at page one of the chart there, we see a couple of items in note. One is the two cook options. Note that they're both egg dishes. There's two ways that eggs can be handled in a freeze-dried meal. They can be prepared ahead of time, fully cooked, and then freeze-dried as is. And those will just reconstitute with hot water and they're ready to eat. Or the raw liquid egg mixture can be freeze-dried as a powder. Now those will reconstitute as a liquid and you'll still have to cook them. So you'll need pans and heat and such. So when you see egg dishes labeled as cook, don't expect to be able to cold soak those. And then in terms of density, there's not a whole lot going on there. There are no ultralight options, and there are only two very light options, one of which is kind of interesting. It's this guacamole instant dip. It's a cold prep. Just add water, no cook. Mix it up. You can scoop it with chips or crackers, smear it on tortillas if you're making wraps or use it to add some calories to your bendito scramble. 
Page two finishes up with Alpine Air. They have uh, one more very light option. It's another cold prep side dish, the spicy Southwest hummus. Backpackers Pantry has the largest menu of any of the manufacturers considered here. They have 38 different flavors of entrees. They come in these nice pouches that have the resealable strips, which is good if you don't tend to eat them all in one sitting. Uh, and while we're only really addressing caloric density here, there's the issue of volumetric density. And so just bear in mind that one entree to the next can have a dramatic difference in the amount of bulk. And once again, look at the density. And while we do get our very first ultralight option here with the Colorado omelet, more than half of everything on the page is heavy. And that was kind of a surprise to me. I mean, the number one density killer is water weight, and freeze-dried food has all the water removed, so you'd think it would be lightweight. Well, not so much. I could literally walk you through the grocery store and fill up a backpack with lighter foods than the average of what you're looking at here. And again, if you're interested in what those higher density options are, go see the video that's first in the series. On page two, we got a bunch more stuff, everything from breakfast to entrees and desserts. And that includes another ultralight option, which is the egg mix. And mind you, this is the raw powder, which still has to be scrambled after you add water. It's really no different than the Ova Easy egg crystals we talked about in the first video. Maybe other than this is sold in camp stores and this is sold in grocery stores. Now, if it's calories per container that you want, you can't do better amongst the regular style meal pouches than the granola with bananas, almond, and milk at 1,240 calories. And then one more thing to note on this page, a couple of bumps in the form of some freeze-dried meats. No seasonings, no other ingredients, just meat. And while that's not unusual, there's lots of manufacturers that make freeze-dried meats, they almost always come in the form of these big number 10 cans. Backpacker's Pantry is one of the only manufacturers I could find that has them in these convenience one-ounce packs. So scramble them into your egg mix, add them to a vegetarian dish, or use it to double down on the chicken in your Jamaican jerk rice. Page 3 finishes up with Backpacker's Pantry. Near the bottom there, you'll see a very light option. It's the whole milk powder. Now, there's nothing special about that. You can get that from a lot of places. But again, it's almost always in a huge package. This is basically the only place I could find that makes a nice small pouch. This one rehydrates to four cups of milk. And one of the things we talked about in the previous video was a series of dry granolas. So if you wanted cereal, you could just add this milk powder then you'd end up with an option that was significantly higher density than the one that Backpacker's Pantry offers. Good to go is a newer, smaller brand. You can find them at places like REI. They have a gluten-free vegan twist. Uh, they have good calories for the size. A menu of about 10 selections, but uh, none of them are lightweight. Mountain House is one of the oldest and biggest brands in freeze-dried food. I've been eating this stuff since I was a kid. Notice how much more color there is in the density column. Also, they have the greatest variety in packaging. They've got everything from the 10-serving can to the 2-serving pouch to the 1-serving pro-pack and then the ultra-compact military surplus. All shown here in the breakfast skillet, which is one of the very few options with ultralight density in this entire study. In fact, they even have a hyperlight option. It's the cooked, freeze-dried ground beef. Now, it only comes in these big cans, but at this density, it might be worth it to uh, buy in bulk and do some repackaging. And remember, this isn't just to be used only with other freeze-dried food. You can stir it into your mac and cheese, make chili mac. Add it to egg crystals for a hobo scramble, or just use it to boost the calories on some of these hiker favorites that unfortunately have got a relatively weak density. Page two shows us a bunch more options, almost none of which is heavy, and several are very light.
Packet Gourmet has a large number of entries, but you'll see uh, most of them are individual ingredients. I guess that's so that you can assemble your own freeze-dried recipes in the field. They do make entrees though, a lot of them are marked with the BYOB, which is for bring your own bread. They're essentially fillings or spreads that are meant to go in either sandwiches or wraps using bread and tortillas that you would bring separately. They do have some ultralight bumps in pouches like the butter powder and the ground beef. And on page two you'll see more of the same, a lot of fruits and vegetables sold separately. Uh, and some more hyperlight bumps like uh, sausage crumbles, cheddar cheeses, and then on the last page some sour cream powder and some more BYOB options. Next up we have a batch of three smaller companies all with their own spin. For those of you on the paleo diet that wonder what you'll be able to eat on the trail Along comes Paleo Meals to Go. You only have five flavors, but at least you do have a freeze-dried option. And then there's Peak Refuel. They tend to be high in calories and strong in protein, including this beef pasta marinara, which is almost a thousand calories and just shy of 50 grams of protein. And then lastly, we have Thrive Life. They seem to be more of a food storage and preparedness company. Most of their products are individual ingredients that come in cans. But they do have a product subset called Thrive Life Express. And those come in pouches. They're for serving pouches though, and they're not resealable. So, you know, if you're in a group or you eat a lot. Also, all of their recipes do require simmering time to cook. And last of all, we have the Wise Company. Now they are a bulk storage for long-term preparedness company. Most of what they sell is large quantities and all bundled together so that you cannot individually choose which flavors you want. But they do have a small line that they do market for backpacking. Those pouches are the only ones that I've included in the chart here. And just something to be aware of. The USDA has lots of rules on food labeling. Lots and lots of rules. One of them is that if you're going to call your product beef and noodles, you have to have a certain amount of beef in there. If you've only got trace amounts of meat, you end up having to call it noodles with beef, where the beef comes second. And one of the things that WISE does is they'll supplement with textured vegetable protein in other words, soy. Well, that does it for the chart. There's just a couple of other topics that I wanted to look into, one of which was package weight. I've noticed on the tubes that some of y'all like to repackage your meals to save weight. So I wanted to measure that out to see just what we're talking about. The original Mountain House bags very sturdy. I've never had one of these burst or leak and it's designed specifically to handle the boiling water so you can prepare it right in the bag and that way there's no dishes to worry about. This weighs 20 grams empty. Next we have the Ziploc one quart freezer style bags which are the thicker ones. These are supposed to be able to handle boiling water uh, they're not nearly as tough as this, but still fairly sturdy, unless you're really hard on your food bag. I would think you'd be okay carrying your food in this. And these weigh 7 grams. And then last we have what they call the sandwich bag. This is not only the smallest bag, but it's also the thinnest material. I think these are a burst risk uh, when you're tossing around your food bag trying to hang it. Also, these are not supposed to handle the boiling water, so if you did use this packaging option, you would probably have to keep at least one other container for the preparation. These weigh 2 grams. So by switching to the quart size, that's a 13 gram savings. And if you use the sandwich size, that's 18 grams per bag. So what's that look like on your entire trip? Well, 
say that you eat a breakfast, an entree, and a dessert each day. That's three bags a day. On a five-day trip, using the quart size, you're looking at over six ounces of savings. And if you go with the little one, those savings go to over half a pound. And in case anybody's curious, this is what the entire contents of this bag looks like in the littlest sack. And the last topic I looked at was the issue of cost per calorie depending on package type. In other words, what's the cheapest way to buy this stuff? Using Mountain House as an example, if you were to buy their beef stroganoff in the 10 serving can, it works out to a price per calorie of 1.42 cents. And at 3,000 calories a day, a day's worth of calories would cost you 42.60. For the two and a half serving pouch, the daily cost ends up being $43.50, or only 90 cents more. For the two serving pro pack, your daily cost is $45.60. And for the single serving pouches, the cost jumps sharply to $69 a day. So, if you enjoy the durability and the ease of use of the original packaging, you're going to pay very little extra for that convenience. But if you are repackaging anyway, you can save a few dollars by buying in the cans. So in conclusion, freeze-dried meals are not as light as I thought. There's an awful lot of heavy ones out there. But there are some light options. You just need to know what you're doing which is why I hope that this chart is a useful tool. And it's available for download. There is a link in the description below. As stated in the previous video, brand and flavor matter. Personally, I carry one bag a day. For me, it ends up being about having a nice, hot, no-hassle meal at the end of a long day. But if either the density or the flavor are an issue for you, consider some of our Hyperlite bumps. Turn your chicken teriyaki into cashew chicken. Or add some PB to a curry dish and make a peanut sauce. You can even try shorting the water in the recipe a little bit and then loosening it back up with some olive oil. And of course, butter and bacon make everything better. Well, that's all folks. I hope this was useful to you and as always I very much appreciate your time. Now I gotta go eat some chicken teriyaki because I opened up the package. Whoa, that's one ginormous light!